What's up, guys? Coach Matt and YouGoProBaseball.com, and I'm here with Antonelli from Antonelli Baseball. Finally, Got down people here. have been asking for us to get together. We're here. We're I'm here. glad you're here. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. And we're going to talk about the four big misconceptions in hitting today. Let's do it. And I want to hear your take on some of them. The first one is getting your front foot down early. Is that yep. a good piece of advice, bad piece of advice? What's your, what's your take? Yeah, sure. So I think... You hear this all the time with, with coaches, youth coaches, right? Get your foot down early. Get Any time a guy fouls a ball back or maybe takes a pitch, it's always because the front, front foot isn't down early enough. Um, let's go back. There's a couple of different things I think you got to cover. The first thing is there's a bunch of different ways to stride. And so the, the front foot's going to get down at a little bit different time for every hitter. So if you've got a guy like you know Josh Donaldson who's going to have a bigger stride, right, he's going to typically get his front foot down when the ball is about halfway to the plate. That's what you typically see with guys with normal strides. So if you've got a guy with like a leg kick, like a Donaldson, or you see just a, a more of a just typical standard stride, usually the front foot is gonna get down when the ball is about halfway, okay? But you're gonna also have some hitters that are a little bit different. If you think about uh, like an Albert Pujols who kind of just does this move and he just kind of puts his toe down or like a Curtis Granderson who will put his foot down really, really early and now he's gonna keep getting loaded and keep getting ready. They're gonna get their foot down a lot earlier. But sometimes coaches see that and they say, See, you got to get your foot down early. You should have your foot down before the pitcher even starts his windup or releases the ball. So it's a little bit of a case-by-case -case basis. Some guys, again, are going to get down when the ball's halfway. That's perfectly fine. That's what you actually typically see. The foot will get down when the ball's about halfway to the plate, and that's when the swing is going to really launch. But, again, if you've got a guy like Pujols who's going to put his foot down a little bit earlier, that's fine too. The thing that you'll notice is even when they get their foot down, for guys like a pool holes or a guy like a Granderson, they're still loading even though their foot's down. So they're not swinging. They're not just putting their foot down and just stop. Everything's dead. Momentum's dead. I'm not getting loaded anymore. They don't do that. They put it down. They keep getting loaded. And now they launch almost at that same point when the ball's halfway to the plate. So you, what you don't want to see, what youth hitters do when they hear, oh, I got to get my foot down early, is... They get their foot down, the pitcher hasn't even released the ball, and now they're just, they're stopped. They're not getting pulled back, they're not getting loaded anymore, and now it's wait for the ball to come and just try to take an arm swing. That's where you get in trouble. So I, I'm a firm believer that you can, you can get ready too late, obviously. If the ball's past you and your foot's not down, that's a problem, okay? But you can also get ready too early, have my foot down so early where my momentum stopped, I'm not getting pulled back or loaded, and now I have to basically stop swing from a standstill. I can't create anything with that either. Timing and momentum is, in my opinion, everything sure. in hitting, because as a pitcher, I'm trying to mess up your timing and your balance, so that's huge. Uh, quick piggyback off of that, yes. what, was your, what was your stride? So, it's funny because I was, uh, if you, Let's say this, I've changed a couple times during my career. I was almost always a wider guy with my foot down. I do that little tap with my toe. But again, if you watch me, I put my foot down and I keep loading. And then when my heel dropped, that's when I would go. So that's how I typically did it. Now, when I got to the major leagues, actually, they wanted to give me a leg kick. And one of the reasons was I think they thought that I was getting down too early. It's funny that, this, that we're talking about this. And so I started to try to do a leg kick and I just couldn't figure it out because I'm, I'm used to, you know, I, I think you're used to a certain rhythm and my rhythm was always this, boom, and hit. And now all of a sudden I'm, I'm trying to do this and I just couldn't figure it out. So that's why I don't try to tell anybody you have to stride like this. You have to get your foot down at this time, right? All I tell them is that they've, they've got to be ready to go. The, the swing has got to launch when that ball is about halfway there. Now, whether you want to do this or whether you want to do this, that's up to you. And then if you're too late, if you notice that a guy is too late, because some guys don't get their foot down on time and they are late, I don't always tell them, get your foot down earlier. I tell them, you've got to get this foot off the ground sooner. You have to be ready to, to launch the swing when the ball's about halfway there. So now, instead of thinking like, oh, I got to get my foot down and start right here, I'm just thinking, okay, when do I got to get this foot up, depending on what my load, uh, depending on what my load is and what my stride is, do I have to get it up here? Do I have to get it up a little bit later? 
So now I'm able to kind of look at the pitcher when I'm on the on deck circle and figure out when do I got to get ready? When do I got to get my foot up so that I'm on time getting it down? Three things that stood out uh, from what you just said right there rhythm, timing, and momentum. Mm -hmm. I think that pretty much sums all that up. Have, have, have that good rhythm, that good timing, and good momentum. The second misconception mm -hmm. that I want to talk about is don't drop your hands. You hear coaches right. all the time, don't drop your hands, keep your hands up, keep them high. What do you think about that? Yeah, so I think there's different ways, just like there's different ways to stride, there's different ways to load. So I'm never going to personally take a hitter and just because their hands lower say, hey, you can't do that, man. You got to keep your hands up because there's been plenty of really good hitters that load with their hands dropping a little bit. So you'll see all different stuff, right? You'll see some hitters that just kind of go and pull straight back right here. You'll see some hitters that start, pull back here, and all they do is stride and they're, ba they're back already. You'll see some guys that really tip the bat this way and then go. And you'll see some guys that pump the bat down low, right? You got like a Barry Bonds. You, you know, Barry Bonds used to pump his hands down and then they come up. Josh Donaldson, they're kind of here and then they come up. So there's all different ways to do it. And so my thing is, as long as when you're starting to move forward, whether they're going down or just back or whatever they're doing, they have to eventually, if they go down, they will eventually start to come back up as I'm getting right here and getting stretched. But I don't tell a player, hey, you can't go down, man, because there's, who, why, who am I to say that when there's been plenty of hitters that go down? Just like there's hitters that go here. They do all different type of, types of things, but they've got to be eventually pulled back right here when you're about to launch the bat. So right. that, that has a lot to do, again, with rhythm, timing, and momentum as well. It all kind of ties in, kind of swinging from the ground up through your kinetic chain, right? Absolutely, and that's why I, that's why I wouldn't change. I'm not going to change it. A guy that's done this his whole career, we'll get a lot of players, right? A young player comes up through our system, and they're a great hitter, right? And they get ready by doing this. So everything is predicated off having this move in their swing. And I've seen some coaches that'll watch, a guy can absolutely crush balls, be an amazing hitter. And if it's a coach that's just said, oh no, you can't drop your hands. Then they say, hey, no, no, you, that might work now, but that's not gonna work at the next, that's the big thing, right? Well, I've seen plenty of guys have it work at the next level. So I'm not gonna take this guy and tell him that he can't drop his hands just because, I know it's one of those old school things, can't drop your hands, right? If this is how his swing works and he's successful, I don't take that out of it. I just, I let him do it. Now, if I feel like it's causing issues, maybe they're not getting back up here. Maybe they're dropping and they're just, you know, they're swinging from here and they're not finally getting pulled back up here. Then you can work on it. But just the whole idea of just dropping the hands to get loaded, I don't think is a big deal. Like I wouldn't change that just for the sake of changing it. Right, and just to touch on what you said about the uh, coaches, um, you know, one thing I learned later in my career, which I wish I learned earlier was, yeah. you're gonna have a hundred different coaches and they're probably gonna tell you a lot of different things, yep. you know? and. Once I learned to listen to everyone, try everything, but it's okay to get rid of stuff that is not working or doesn't make sense to you. And then keep the stuff that is good, you know, because again, you're gonna have so many different coaches. You got, especially at the youth level, you got, you know, uh, down here in Florida, these guys are playing pretty much all year round. So they might have two, three different coaches. They got private trainers. They got mom and dad, maybe grandpa's giving them advice, all this different advice. Once you can, instead of trying to change your swing every single time someone tells you to do something, think about it, try it, feel it, see what it feels like. If it's working, maybe stick with it. If it's not, get rid of it. It's okay. You just That's the process that you need to go through uh, in learning and over your career and developing your own swing, um, which, is, which is great. I agree with everything you just said there. Again, goes back into timing, rhythm, and momentum mm -hmm. and swinging from the ground up. The third misconception is I hear a lot is swinging down at the ball like right. you got to swing down to the ball get short to it and get right through it now before we get into that I also want to say that we're not trying to bash any coaches out there you especially youth coaches you know I a lot of you guys are volunteers you know you're, you're putting in hard work and you're you're trying to teach what you know so we're just trying to explain from our experience a major league hitter here uh, minor league pitcher for what we know to be true of the game so we're just we're just trying to help and I don't want it to come across like you know we're trying to put out like we know everything we're just trying to let you know what has helped us throughout the year so what is sure. your take on swinging down to the ball right well let's start with this and we were talking about this earlier uh, I always talk about feel versus real so most in my opinion most hitters feel like they're swinging down on the ball that's the feeling that they get and most most hitters when they show you if you go 
talk to a major league hitter, a lot of guys will show you not only down to the ball, but they'll they'll keep going down until they make contact. Now this is the again this is the feel that a lot of players they feel right. And, and one example of this is one of my first years with the Padres. I was watching Adrian Gonzalez, who was a great hitter, right, amazing hitter, and I heard I watched him hit. And I heard him talking to guys, and he was talking about just dropping the head down on the ball, and he was showing this move of just literally being almost straight down to the ball. And so I watch him talk about that, and then I'm watching him hit, and I'm saying, it doesn't look like he's doing exactly what he's showing us. And that's usually what you see with most players, is that most really good players, is they show one thing and then they do something else. So feel versus real. Feel versus real. But real is not always what you feel. So I'll start with that. When I watch, now when I watch, I just put on video and I'm watching all the best hitters. What I feel most guys do is they get the barrel behind the ball early. So the ball, I always tell our guys, the pitcher's standing on an elevated mound, he's throwing overhand to a catcher that's squatted. So the ball has to come down, okay? Every ball is gonna come down. And so as a hitter, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get on that same plane as the pitch. The only way to do that is I've gotta swing my barrel. When I come through the hitting zone, I've gotta be slightly up through the ball, okay? Now, this is pitch dependent. Like if you get a ball that's down and really away, sometimes that doesn't happen. You won't be, you know, you might not see the bat perfectly behind the ball. But in general, I feel like you're typically going to see the barrel get behind the ball, get in the hitting zone early, and then move on the same path through the ball for a long time. So if I can do that, I tell the guys like we have this hitting window right here. And the more area I can cover, the earlier I can get in here and stay there. Well, now my consistency goes way up because when the pitch is being thrown, I don't know the speed. I don't know where it's going. I don't know any of that. I'm reading it as it comes in. So if you think about the pitch path from about here to the catcher's mitt, right? I have to hit it on one of these pitch points. I don't know which pitch point it's going to be. If I was that good, we'd, you know, we'd all hit 800 if we knew exactly where we were going to make contact every single time. I'm not good enough to be that perfect all the time. So I need to give myself some margin for error. So if I can get in the zone early, right, and I'm in the zone back here, and I just happen to be late, oh, I messed up. I thought I was going to be here. I hit it right here. I can hit the ball that way, and I can hit a line drive. If I'm on time, I can hit it there. If I'm early, I can hit it there. So I'm giving myself a chance to cover all of those pitch points. Now, if, I'm, if I don't do that, if I'm either really down through the ball, so again, the ball's coming down, and now I'm coming down, well, now that window just got shrunk to about this big right here. And so now my timing has to be super perfect. If I'm not perfect, I foul the ball off or I just I miss it. OK, so that's why I think one of the common denominators from all the really good hitters is being in that hitting window for a really, really long time. The more down you are or I mean, the same thing can happen if you lose your barrel and you're really up. Well, then you same thing. You don't stay in that window for a long time. So it's not just too steep of a swing. It can also be a swing that you kind of lose the barrel and work up too much. All right, so that's that's the main point. And then the last thing I'll say real quick is if my goal is to hit, you know, launch angles like the big thing now, and some people will bash launch angle because they hear launch and they think like guys are just trying to hit home runs, right? All all we're talking about is ball flight, and we've talked like I've talked about that forever. I was talked before launch angle was even a word. Coaches were talking to us about ball flight. So if you're trying to hit, you're trying to get a hit. You're trying to hit a line drive with some carry. The ball is going to be in the air, right? If I can hit the ball in the air, a line drive or carry, I'll have more base hits. No one can debate that there's more base hits on balls that are over the infielder's head, line drives that get over the infielder's head than just hitting ground balls, right? So I get more base hits, but it's really hard to hit a double on the ground. It's really hard to hit a triple on the ground unless I hit it right down the lines. And I, I've never seen anyone hit a home run on the ground. So if I want to hit extra base hits, I've got to hit the ball a little bit in the air. So if I want to do that, if the ball's coming in slightly down and I'm swinging like this on it, well then if I hit above the, the center of the ball, I'm going to smash it into the ground. If I hit below the center, then I usually will kind of clip the ball and the ball goes, goes up in the air, but it's like a fly ball to shallow right field for right-handed hitter. So if I want to drive that thing, the ball's coming slightly down, I'm coming slightly up, now I'm able to impact it more squarely and if I hit just below center, I'll hit the ball in the air, but it won't be straight up in the air. Now I get some carry. And if I hit it above center, I might hit a ground ball, but I've got a chance to hit a hard ground ball, not just smother a ball into the ground if I'm too steep on it. 
So that, that's what I always talk about, getting in the zone for a long period of time and being on the same path so I can impact it squarely and get some good ball flight on it. One of the biggest things I see with young hitters is they don't, they're, it's hard for them to get on that plane because of what I call their body angle, their, yep. their tilt. I believe you call it posture is the right. word you use because I'm a big Antonelli baseball YouTube subscriber player, <laughs> uh, which by the way, you guys need to go check out his YouTube because he's got some really great stuff uh, on there. So if you haven't yet, I'll leave the link down below where you can subscribe to his channel. But I think that's one of them. And we don't have to elaborate it on it in this video. Right. We're going to talk about it in another video. So definitely go check that video out. Um, but that's a big thing is kind of setting that that body angle or or posture to make it easier to get on that on right. that swing plane. Sure. So the fourth uh, misconception or thing that I hear a lot, which I want to hear your take on, yep. is uh, you'll, you'll hear coaches a lot say, Keep the shoulder closed. Keep stay closed longer. Keep the front side closed. Right. Well, what's your take on that, and how does it really work? Yeah. So the move that I see a lot of working on is this move where they take the knob kind of to the ball, and and coaches don't want this shoulder to open. So again, and it's not just up in my area, although I see that a lot up in my area. But kind of wherever you go, you'll see a lot of players trying to do this they think that this is staying right because you always hear stay close stay close anytime again anytime a ball's fouled off or a ball's popped up you'll hear either stop dropping your back shoulder or you'll he'll hear stay close oh he's flying open he's flying open and so they want to make this move right here well if i if i don't let this shoulder turn and i just try to keep it closed and i try to do this move well then i'm only literally hitting with my upper body so i can't create very much bat speed at all and also typically when guys swing with just their upper body you can kind of see how i'm doing it right now the bat doesn't get behind the ball so i start coming in really really steep at it so if i want to make a good turn and we talk a lot about you know getting into position pulling back and getting into position but then once once this launches right and my barrel starts to work this way well as that happens my upper body has to turn right so this is allowing me to use the ground, as you talk about, use the ground, be in really good sequence, and that's how I'm able to create a whole lot of bat speed. Again, I can't, I can't do that if I don't let this shoulder get out of the way, okay? Literally, my body has to clear a path for the bat to work into the zone. And again, I see this happen so much, players trying to stay on the ball, and they're just fighting themselves. They're literally getting in their own way to get the bat there. Instead of letting the, just let the swing happen, and turn, get out of the way, and as long as you stay over, that's why I tell the guys, there's a difference. This is not pulling your shoulder out, or pulling off the ball. Pulling off the ball is when you come out of posture, and you come up out of your swing, this would be pulling your shoulder up or coming off the ball. So if a player is doing this, then yeah, you can say, we got to keep your shoulder on, but we don't keep our shoulder on by doing this. We keep our shoulder on by staying over the plate in good posture and then turning. And, and literally I tell you guys, we want to feel like we're staying over the plate. Don't come up away from the plate. I want to stay over the plate like that. Now I'm on the ball. My shoulder moved, but I'm on the ball. So um, there's a lot of, as we talked about with the stride and hands and show a lot of misconceptions but if you really start to break down again just look at what major league guys are doing you'll never see a major league guy try to fight with his shoulder in there to do that move you just can't ha you can't create enough bad speed you can't get on path you're not going to be successful that's great one of the things i tell my young hitters too is to swing around the axis so once they once they understand what body angle or posture is they create it now i'm telling them to just stay on that axis that spine that your spine is the axis and you're just swinging around that axis. So that's great, man, that's golden information. If you guys want to hear more of what Matt's got to say, definitely go check out his channel, man. I'm super excited uh, that he's here and we got some, some, some great videos for you guys. Uh, so check those out, I'll leave uh, some of those videos over here. Don't forget to subscribe to YouGoPro and to Antonelli Baseball and we'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks, man. Thank you.